Hello and welcome to this first virtual press conference of the World Federation of Neurology. July 22 is World Brain Day and we filmed experts from around the world to provide first-hand expertise about the status and future of neurology worldwide. Thanks for your time. The World Federation of Neurology celebrates the World Brain Day on the 22nd of July. This, is, this day is when we remind ourselves and the public of the, amazing of the amazing functions and wonders of the brain. The date was chosen as the WFN was inaugurated on the 22nd of July 1957. The first World Brain Day was launched in 2014 and it is dedicated to a different topic every year. This year we chose the topic of brain health and the aging population. The burden of neurological disorders continues to be underestimated, underrecognized, and underfunded. Neurological, mental, developmental, and substance use disorders cause more disability than cardiac disease and cancer. Brain health should be treated at the highest level of uh, healthcare priorities. Our World Brain Day initiative is meant as a wake-up call to political decision makers around the globe. Brain diseases not only cause individual suffering, but they also have much greater social and economic relevance than often assumed. Despite the huge burden they cause, neurological conditions are largely absent from the national and international health agendas. The message we are sending out with the World Brain Day is clear. Brain health needs to be prioritized on the political agenda. Neurologists are the advocates of brain health and need to make the leading role in advancing new approaches in stemming the scourge of neurological disease. Brain health and the aging population was chosen as a topic for 2016 as we are partnering with other organizations such as the European Academy of Neurology in order to bring more visibility to a most important topic. Population aging has a major social, health and economic consequences. It is becoming increasingly clear that neurological disorders such as stroke and dementia, but to name a few, are projected to rise at a rate that could overwhelm our healthcare systems. Brain health is the most important determinant of social and economic well-being of older persons. In December of 2013, the G8 leaders decla declared, and I quote, the ambition to identify a cure or a disease-modifying therapy for dementia by 2025, and to increase collectively and significantly the amount of funding for dementia research to reach that goal, end of quote. The WFN is aiming to increase global awareness on the management and prevention of all brain and neuromuscular diseases affecting the elderly, as well as on concepts and means of preventing brain disease. The 119 national member societies of the World Federation of Neurology are going to carry the messages of World Brain Day 2016 nationally regionally and globally by holding events and implementing educational and awareness activities in order to advocate and campaign for brain health. To support their activities, the World Federation of Neurology is providing promotional, educational materials such as posters, brochures and presentations. An important focus of the campaign is the use of social media. There is no health without brain health. By joining our efforts, we will make this year's World Brain Day a success. Thank you. About 20% of global population above age 65 is suffering from one or more of neurological diseases. Three most common neurological diseases affecting aging population include Alzheimer's disease, stroke and Parkinson's disease. Alzheimer's disease is one of the most common neurological problems affecting elderly population. It is estimated that about one in nine person in the world is suffering from Alzheimer's disease. 
it's a disease characterized by loss of memory and loss of social functioning this disease is preventable and it is also treatable the risk factors for alzheimer's disease include low education repeated head trauma cerebrovascular accidents which are all preventable there is a genetic predisposition for alzheimer's disease also a stroke is the most common neurological disease affecting the world population about 75% of stroke happens in 65 years or older people it is estimated that about 15 to 20% people above age 65 they suffer from a stroke risk factors for stroke include hypertension diabetes dyslipidemia heart diseases tobacco abuse these risk factors are all modifiable and all treatable that's why it is well established that a stroke is a preventable disease it's a treatable disease it has a very high disability a stroke is number one cause of disability around the world disability could be reduced and outcome of stroke patients could be improved with effective interventions high blood pressure control and stopping tobacco are the most common and effective interventions for reducing the burden of stroke in the population parkinson's disease is another neurological disease affecting elderly population it's a neurodegenerative disease its prevalence is about 2% it is characterized by gait difficulty tremor stiffness of the body it's a treatable disease most of the patients with parkinson's disease can if have a normal life with effective medications which are available dementia is a word we use for a wide range of brain disorders characterized by uh, memory loss alzheimer's disease is probably the most frequent and well known of all causes but there are many other brain uh, diseases which cause dementia Dementia is not the same as aging because the majority of elderly people do not have uh, dementia. Dementia is more than memory loss. Persons with dementia may also have impairment in speaking, impaired judgment, difficulties finding their way around. They may alter their behavior and change personality. These symptoms all lead to loss of autonomy and also stigma. Uh, and many people with dementia lose their social contacts family and friends uh, are also influenced by the disorder to a great extent because they will increasingly be involved in caring for the person with dementia dementia affects society to a great extent because people with dementia will need increasingly uh, professional care during the course of the disease and many people with dementia will spend their last months or years in nursing home so therefore dementia is among the most costly brain disorders of all actually among the most costly disorders of all disorders and the estimated global cost of dementia is 818 billion US dollars currently this will increase because right now we estimate that there are 46 million people with dementia across the world and in 2050 there will be 131 million there is no cure for alzheimer's disease and not for other dementias either so it's really time for action scientists must uh, go together to in- try to find a cure and we must invest in research in the meantime people should know that it is possible to prevent to some extent um the uh, number of people with dementia uh, it is possible to postpone the time of onset uh, somewhat by healthy lifestyle uh, we should also know that it's important that people who do have symptoms of possible dementia for instance memory loss that they have access to diagnostic evaluation because too many people with dementia today do not have a diagnosis and therefore they do not have access to appropriate post diagnostic support people with dementia should also have access to professional care person centered care 
scientists, healthcare providers and governments must go together in order to plan for an international action plan for dementia. First of all, let me share some facts and figures on the topics of this year's World Brain Day. Brain health and the aging population. The number of persons older than 60 years is more than 800 million today, representing 12% of the global population. And it is growing, with the expectation that it will reach more than 2 million billion persons of, or 20% of the population by 2050. The number of neurological patients will rise continuously as a result. Yet modern neurology can offer much for managing the consequences of these demographic developments. Healthcare policymakers in all countries would therefore be well advised to invest in expanding neurological care instead of only perceiving old age as a burden. The limitation of healthcare budgets is just not an appropriate answer. Society simply has to afford the costs of treatment, therapy and care for our elderly fellow human beings. In this respect, we as neurologists need to be our patients' advocates. In addition to a sufficient level of acute neurological care, the aim for aging societies must be further expand rehabilitation capacities and the possibilities of long-term care. Palliative care will also take on an increasingly important role. Neurologically oriented palliative medicine can cushion the effects of an incurable disease for various lengths of time. This improves the quality of life for severely ill people with no prospects for a cure. Given that about 80% of the elderly population will live in less developed regions of the world by 2025, the World Federation of Neurology is also advocating a more just distribution of global resources. Although we have made great strides forward in both diagnosis and therapy of neurological diseases, appalling inequalities still exist in the availability of treatment. Many people across the globe either have no or insufficient access to neurological care. Let us look at the number of hospital beds for neurology patients per 100,000 inhabitants. It is lowest in Africa with 0.23 and Southeast Asia with 0.28 beds per 100,000 people. Generally, the number of beds for neurologic patients in public hospitals is significantly lower in low income versus high income regions. The same trend can be seen among neurosurgeons or pediatric neurologists. We should also be aware that in some low-income countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and some Asian countries such as Cambodia or Myanmar, the situation is even worse than these figures show. This is not acceptable. The stated goal of the World Federation of Neurology is to promote quality neurology worldwide and to ensure patients access to good care wherever they live. We will continue to work towards this aim and I hope the World Brain Day is one of the initiatives that will support our efforts.